Hi, I'm Rabbi Jack Bemperod, and uh, together with a group of individuals, rabbis and lay people, we've worked together to produce these 10 principles, 10 principles of spiritual Judaism. The reason we decided to develop these principles is largely due to the fact that there's a great deal of confusion as to what it is that actually Judaism teaches. People aren't clear, Jews aren't clear what they believe, why they believe it, how they should live it. In the past, uh, uh, throughout our history as Jews, individuals, rabbis and others have formulated principles that tried to capture the very essence, uh, the basic meaning of Judaism. Most of us know that in our prayer book we say the Shema, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And here monotheism became the fundamental principle of Judaism. Later on, uh, the Ten Commandments were established as basic principles of Judaism. Maimonides, uh, in the um, 12th century, formulated his 13 principles of the faith, where he tried to clarify what are the fundamental principles that make a Jew a Jew. Each one of those principles were related to a particular need at that time. And so we have to ask ourselves, what are the needs today that would want us to develop these principles? Now, today we are facing some very critical uh, issues in Judaism. First of all, there's a very large uh, percentage of intermarriage. And since so many Jews are intermarrying, there's always the question on the side of the Jew, well, what is it that I believe? Do I really want to continue it? I'm confronted with the fact that I'm married to a non-Jew. What should I do about the children? Why should I want to continue Judaism? Uh, similarly, we know on the basis of studies that many, many Jews have abandoned Judaism. Uh, we don't have many more Jews today than we had before the Second World War, in spite of the tremendous amount of migration coming to the United States. In the past, the way Jews have tried to uh, deal with these issues is by teaching how to be Jewish. Now we realize that that's not enough. It's important to teach how to be Jewish, but first, but before that, we have to teach why be Jewish. We have to ask people to ask, well, why would I want to be Jewish? And I think that the way to resolve that question is that they want to be Jewish because the core principles of Judaism are things they believe in, that they think are true, and it's the core principles by which they live their life. And that's what led us to develop these tense principles of Judaism. Now, we call them spiritual principles. Why is that? Well, today, many people, Jews and non-Jews, may not even see themselves as religious or as specifically practicing, but they do feel that they have some link to spirituality, to something that is sacred, to something that is holy, to something that is precious. And so that's why we basically are trying to show how uh, these principles are indeed spiritual principles of Judaism. Judaism teaches us that all human beings are created in the divine image and therefore are linked to God by the divine spark within them. This principle is the first and basic principle because it affirms the link between human beings, all human beings, and the divine. It is that part within them that strives for the holy, the sacred. It is that part within them that strives to ser search for something that transcends them. It's that part that gives them an immortal longing, that gives them a sense of infinity, that gives them a sense of the eternal. These are fundamental elements within every human being, and they can't be satisfied by anything that is lower than them they have to be satisfied by that which transcends them. And that's why we say it is this element, this spark within human beings that connects us to the divine. Judaism teaches us how to nurture the divine spark within us, elevating us in moral worth and dignity and linking us to the divine. Principle number two teaches us to nurture the divine spark within. Spirituality is inner growth, nurtured by ethical behavior, the blossoming of that is, which is what makes us uniquely human. The taking upon ourselves of the task of character development, of pursuing the paths of righteousness, accepting responsibility, and leading an ethical life. The reason ideals are important in Judaism is because the ideals are 
the impetus to action. It's by having these ideals that orients our behavior and gives us the goals by which we should strive to accomplish uh, what society demands and what we demand. By doing this, we connect ourselves and develop ourselves to connect with the divine. God must be the ground for the creation of the world and life and mind and personality and spirit, the ever-continuing creation of all that is worth in existence. And by our developing that which is of worth, then you have this correlation, this connection between human beings and God. Judaism rejects intermediaries. It is never the responsibility of any one individual to determine and define our lives. We can learn from a great many individuals, from prophets and sages to ordinary people. Judaism teaches us that anything that diminishes human beings to exalt the one perfect being or an intermediary is antithetical to Judaism. It is never one individual, be Moses or Buddha, Jesus or Mohammed, who determines and defines our lives or acts as an intermediary or savior. Instead, there are many individuals, prophets, sages, ordinary people, including non-Jews, from whom we can learn how to live. Ben Zoma put it very well when he said, who is wise? And he says, the wise person is one who can learn from everything and everyone, because every individual has something to contribute. And any attempt to say that we can somehow live in our heroes, who live for us, die for us and suffer for us is really a, a diminishing of the divine spark within every human being. Judaism teaches us that the revelations of God cannot be limited to one document, person, or time. Life, knowledge, and reality are alive and changing. Therefore, Judaism cannot be bound by any particular text without the possibility of modification. The improved status of women today is one result of this perspective. The fourth principle teaches us that no one person, time, or text has cornered the market on truth. Therefore, Judaism cannot be bound by any particular text without the possibility of modification. It must be able to change. We are God's seekers, not God possessors. We are not concerned with religious certainty. We are concerned with religious understanding. And that means it's a continuing process of revision, taking in new understanding, new ideas, and so that we can incorporate in Judaism the latest developments, ethical, rational. And so and by doing that, we can then take the best of our experience and integrate it with the best in Judaism. This is true of science. Science is continually learning. It's continually incorporating new information, different experiences. The reality is that if we had been stuck with the contributions of any particular time and not able to change it, that would mean that progress in religion itself would have been impossible. But you can't really change religion by atheism or the rejection of religion. The only cure in this world for the wrong use of faith is the right use of faith. And the divorce of religion from intelligence is fatal to religion. So that, for example, the belief in one God, uh, humanity, that all human beings were made in the divine image, uh, the idea of the messianic age, of a, a time of peace and justice, all ideas that Judaism contributed to the world. If we had been stuck in pagan ideas, there would never have been any change. So we have to take the very best that Judaism contributed and build on that from generation to generation. Judaism teaches us that ritual without ethics is not only fruitless, but idolatrous and anti-religious. Ritual serves the purpose of implementing and embodying the ethical and spiritual dimensions of Judaism. Ritual should never be a substitute for ethics or charitable acts. One should never think that because they're engaging in ritual that somehow they're off the hook with respect to ethical behavior. The very essence of Judaism is to indicate that ritual has its place, but also morality has its place. And the greatness of Judaism, especially in Leviticus and in the Bible, is where they categorically say 
that nothing can be holy if it's unethical. For example, the Sabbath is one of the great contributions of Judaism to the world. The idea that all human beings, the stranger, everyone, male, female, uh, should have one day of rest, one day when they're in complete control of their time, where they're not seen as objects, but as subjects, so that they, have, they are seen as a soul, as someone who has an intrinsic dignity from within. This is a good example of how a ritual embodies a spiritual principle. A ritual is also a means of dealing with the ultimate mysteries of life, where you need some form of reaffirmation of hope versus despair. For example, when Kennedy was assassinated, everybody says we can't just leave it at that. So we all went to churches and synagogues and reaffirmed the faith in America and the basic values of America and of the good and of overcoming whatever evil is threatening us. Similarly in 9-11, when we had that great tragedy, all of us had services where we were trying to say, look, this isn't the last word. The last word is to overcome the evil, not to acquiesce in it. And so services has that quality, it has that character of helping us to reaffirm the very values we believe in, in face of what seems to challenge those beliefs. Judaism teaches us that the world is a work in progress. Judaism is a call to creativity, a call to make ourselves, our society, and the world into something better. Judaism teaches us that this is not a fallen world, but an unfinished world, and each must do his and her part to, to complete it. Ethical monotheism is a call to creativity, to making ourselves, our society, the world into something better. Judaism came into the world to transform human beings, not simply to console them. It attempts to give people the tools they need to attain their own spirituality, each in his or her own unique way. It is always wrong to give people what will give them a false sense of self or what will appeal to a lesser sense of self. We always have to appeal to the creative potential, the spiritual potential in every human being, help them to fulfill it. By doing that, each of us will then turn the world into something better. Judaism deeply values the search for truth. It is a religion of strong ideals and ethical and spiritual principles. Judaism makes truth central. This means that we cannot, in good conscience, affirm anything in Judaism that either we don't believe or we do not think is credible. The first thing that Judaism must do is ask the question, is it credible? We cannot really affirm anything that negates the most rigorous standards of reason and experience. This is why even Halevi, who's the most mystical of all of the philosophers, says, God forbid that we should believe anything that goes against reason. This is why the Talmud consistently says that if you follow reason, you will come to the same kind of conclusions than if you take what has been revealed. Judaism has very, very strong ideals and ethical and spiritual principles. It was Judaism that gave the ideal of justice and peace to the world. It was Isaiah who said, let them beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, nor be accustomed to war anymore. This is a very important thing. It was the first time that anyone ever came to the conclusion that the ideal goal is peace. Judaism teaches us that the severest consequence of evil doing is that it separates one from God. Such isolation not only becomes a spiritual death, but it ultimately destroys one's creative potential. Judaism teaches us that if a person engages in evil action, the consequences are such that it diminishes that person. Uh, Judaism teaches that you're free to act, but you're not free from the consequences of your acts. And these consequences aren't uh, strictly external. It's not just how they affect others, but it has something to do with how your action affects your inner self. It affects your sense of self. All of a sudden you have a duality. You remember that you were the one that did that. And once you have that duality, that, that part of you saps the creative spiritual element within you. 
And that's why in Judaism, we believe firmly in the concept of repentance. In fact, Judaism taught and introduced repentance into the world. Now, what does repentance mean? Repentance means that my past doesn't have to be my future. Now, many people, in recognizing that they have fallen short, and keep in mind, Judaism affirms that everyone falls short in one form or another, but it's been recognizing that we fall short and coming to terms with that and striving to overcome that that we can then have an increase in being. We can in fact become a better person. The Mishnah uh, on the Day of Atonement states that sins between human beings and God, the Day of Atonement atones for. But sins between or among human beings, the Day of Atonement does not atone for until each human being makes a sincere effort to, uh, to reconcile him or herself with his fellow human being. Judaism teaches us the importance of embodying democratic values and stresses the significance of education towards fulfilling our mission. The essence of democracy consists of two fundamental ideas. One is the idea of equality and the other of individual uniqueness. Democracy is symbolized by the concept that every human being can achieve the highest. And you see this exemplified in the story when Joshua says to Moses, look, these people are prophesying, they're trying to take your place. And Moses says, uh, would that all God's children be prophets? In other words, anyone can be a prophet. In fact, even women in the Bible are prophets. And that's why, for example, in Reformed Judaism, we have championed the rights of women and tried to rectify all those uh, usages and laws in the rabbinic tradition that in any way uh, subjugated women. Judaism teaches us to fulfill our obligations and our promise as a people. It compels us to see the world with all its faults and teaches us that its evils and injustices are a call to make the world a better place and to engage in charitable acts of loving kindness. The tenth principle teaches us to fulfill our obligations and our promises as a people. The Jewish people have had a historic role, not just in the Western world, but also throughout the world. Wherever they've been, they have contributed to the societies of which they were a part. In fact, Rabbi Tarfun put it very well when he said, is it not yours to finish the task, but neither is it yours to exempt yourself from it where there's an obligation to make the world better. Now you may say, well now wait, what about all the faults and all the evils and all the injustices in the world? What do we do with that? Well, Judaism believes that our task is not to acquiesce in those injustices, but to do our best to rectify those injustices in terms of the very ideals that Judaism teaches, in terms of the very fact that we have this spiritual element within us which gives us the courage, the capacity, the insight, and the determination to confront those injustices. One way in which the Talmud and Maimonides deals with this is to say that each person should act as if good and evil were equally balanced, and that your act can tilt the scale either in one way or the other. I think that Judaism is a creative synthesis. It's a creative synthesis of four elements. Elements in the past that we have to preserve. Elements in the past that we have to reject. Ideals that we should strive to, to actualize. Now, at some times you can actualize ideals. Other times, the reality of the society makes it almost impossible to do that. And the last thing is a creative response to the particular challenge of the time. Now, I think Judaism has done that throughout its history. The prophet Isaiah called upon the Jewish people to be a light to the nations, to bring about justice to the four corners of the world. Uh, from a biblical point of view and a rabbinic point of view, indeed from a Jewish point of view, the Jewish people is unique. It's unique in the sense that they have taken upon themselves, not just as individuals, but as a people, the challenge to bring the world, to make the world better to bring justice into the world. And this cannot be done as, a, as an individual solely, but it has to be done by the people, Israel, this people, Israel, standing up for these ideals. First and foremost, by standing up for monotheism in a world of paganism. 
Secondly, for in, in, in standing up for uh, individual rights and humanity in a world of inequality. And as a people, we have always, wherever we have gone, embodied these values, not just as individuals. And this is the challenge for us to continue this as a people today in our time.